Welcome to section 33 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video we'll be discussing Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which you can see right here. This scene will take place in a museum of the famous Mona Lisa painting. As you can see, this isn't just any ordinary day at the museum. Rather, this is the day that an attempted robbery of the painting is occurring, as you can see by the guy inside of the bard region that's attempting to steal the painting. Anyway, Mona sounds like Pseudomonas, so we've used it here to help you remember that this image is all about Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Before we go any further, pay close attention to the color of the building. That's right, it's very pink and red appearing, which is to help you remember that Pseudomonas is a gram-negative organism. This is a gram stain of Pseudomonas. Notice that it's rod-shaped and appears pink or red under the microscope. So Pseudomonas is a gram-negative bacillus. Now notice that we've shown an American flag on the wall. This is a museum after all, so it shouldn't be too surprising that flags and paintings are hanging on the walls. Anyway, just like in our other videos, the flag is here to help you remember that Pseudomonas is a flagellated modal organism. Likewise, statues and other artsy stuff is usually in a museum, so now notice that we've shown a statue of a cat. This is to help you remember that Pseudomonas is catalase positive. This is a picture demonstrating the catalase test, which we covered in more detail in section 7, which was our video on Listeria monocytogenes. Recall that the bubbles right here indicate that the organism is catalase positive. You may have thought that this robber was acting alone on this risky adventure, but you'd be wrong. Notice that he has several accomplices, and that they've created three holes in the wall, which is allowing them to throw down all of the valuables from the museum. I guess you could say this crew is secreting the artwork down to the floor below. The three holes in the wall, and the idea of secretion, should help you remember that Pseudomonas utilizes a type 3 secretion system. This is a needle-like protein expressed on the pathogen that allows it to inject toxins into the host cell. So Pseudomonas utilizes a type 3 secretion system. But who are they relying on to steal the valuables? As you can see, this guy below who appears to be stuffing everything into a sack. The sack is here to help you remember that Pseudomonas has a polysaccharide capsule. Now you can see that we've shown a woman who just came out of the restroom when she noticed these robbers. Let's zoom up on her so we can see her a bit better. First, notice that she's wearing a blue necklace. Just like in our other videos, this is here to help you remember that Pseudomonas is oxidase positive. This is an image of the oxidase test, which we covered in more detail in section 20, which is our Neisseria overview video. Recall that if the organism is oxidase positive, then the disc will turn a blue or purple color, which is what we can see on the left right here. So remember, Pseudomonas is oxidase positive. Next, notice that she's pretty freaked out. After all, she is witnessing these robbers stealing from the museum. In an attempt to calm herself down, we can see her actively using her inhaler. Just like in our other videos, this is here to help you remember that Pseudomonas is an obligate aerobe. Finally, notice that she's so scared that she's unable to control her bladder, and we can see her urinating on the ground. This is here to help you remember that Pseudomonas causes urinary tract infections. Okay, now let's zoom back out and continue discussing some other unique features of Pseudomonas. Now you can see that we've shown an oblivious guard off to the side of the building who appears to be enjoying some grapes. In fact, he's so caught up in the moment that he hasn't even noticed the thieves. Anyway, the guard eating grapes is here to help you remember that Pseudomonas produces a grape-like fruity odor. Next, to notice that we've added blue and green paint splattered on the wall. This is the museum's attempt to include modern art, so we can see it right next to the Mona Lisa painting. Anyway, the blue and green colors on the wall are here to help you remember that Pseudomonas produces a blue-green pigment. The compounds responsible for this unique feature are pyocyanin and pyoverdin. This is an image of Pseudomonas producing the characteristic pigment right here. This test tube over here is the control. So pyocyanin is a bluish color and pyoverdin is a green color. Together, the pigments may be seen as a bluish-green color. Now we've shown some more proactive guards who appear to be fighting the thieves. As you can see, one of the guards fired a bullet, which must have missed the thieves and collided with an oxygen tank nearby. Unfortunately, the tank exploded and now there's a big hole in the wall. The exploding oxygen tank can be thought of as reactive oxygen which should help you remember reactive oxygen species. The fact that this is occurring right next to the blue and green painting should help you memorize that pyoverdin and pyocyanin generate reactive oxygen species. In addition to the two guards with the guns, now notice that we've shown a guard who's wearing a shirt that says agency and who is raising an extendable baton into the air. Looks like he's getting ready to whack the thief in the head to prevent him from stealing the Mona Lisa. Anyway, the A in agency should help you remember that this guy represents exotoxin A. And the extendable baton symbol was introduced in our Carinibacterium diphtheriae video and is here to help you remember elongation factor two. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that Pseudomonas produces a virulence factor known as exotoxin A, which inactivates elongation factor two. This is a detailed figure of translation which can be found in section four of molecular biology. Recall that protein translation occurs in three steps, initiation, elongation, 
and termination. As you can see from the image, elongation is when the polypeptide begins to grow. So from the image, you can see that the amino acids serine and methionine are attached to one another right here. As elongation repeats itself, the polypeptide continues to grow until a long chain of amino acids are linked together, like we can see right here. So as the name implies, elongation factor 2 is a factor that's necessary for elongation to occur. Therefore, exotoxin A disrupts this process, resulting in inhibition of protein synthesis and ultimately cell death. So EF2 promotes elongation, and exotoxin A disrupts this process. Okay, with this in mind, let's return to the image. Now let's discuss this sign hanging on the wall that says, come see the museum. As you can see, it appears to be hanging by a bunch of clothespins. Maybe the museum is low on money, or perhaps it's just an artsy way of hanging up the sign. Regardless, the clothespins look like little phospholipids and are here to help you remember phospholipase. The fact that the sign says, come see, should help you remember the letter C. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that Pseudomonas produces a virulence factor known as phospholipase C, which is a toxin that degrades cell membranes. Notice that now we've shown several more characters to the scene. As you can see, one of the thieves threw a smoke grenade to try and cover up their planned escape. Unfortunately for the thieves, the green smoke rose up into the air and caused a light to break. The exposed wires from the broken light reacted, and now we can see a bolt of electricity engulfing a fellow comrade in flames. Anyway, the green smoke should make you think of the endotoxin, and the bolt of electricity should make you think of shock. So putting these ideas together should help you remember that Pseudomonas produces an endotoxin, which causes shock and fever. Okay, now let's move on to discuss the clinical features of Pseudomonas. First, notice that the guy who was electrocuted is now on fire. So I guess you could say he's a burn victim. This is here to help you remember that Pseudomonas causes skin infections in burn victims. As you can see, a nearby museum employee was putting salt in the water softener when he came in contact with a smoke grenade and is now violently coughing. The salt is here to help you remember cystic fibrosis because this genetic disorder results in abnormal sodium chloride regulation. The fact that he's coughing should help you remember pneumonia. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that Pseudomonas causes pneumonia, especially in cystic fibrosis patients. This is thought to be related to the thick polysaccharide capsule of Pseudomonas, which allows the organism to form a biofilm in the respiratory tract of patients with cystic fibrosis and ultimately results in chronic pneumonia. If the biofilm idea is hard for you to remember, just think of a water softener. If you've ever been around one, you'll recall that there is usually a thick layer of salt coating the entire inside of the machine, like a biofilm. So remember, Pseudomonas causes pneumonia in CF patients, and the chronic nature of the pneumonia is due to biofilm formation in the respiratory tract. Next, notice that we've shown a SWAT team attempting to stop these thieves, and this was who the guy was throwing the grenade at in the first place. However, they don't seem too phased by the smoke grenade because they have night vision goggles on, allowing them to see right through the smoke. Night vision goggles cover the eyes just like contacts, so we've included them in this image to help you remember that Pseudomonas causes keratitis in corneal ulcers, especially in contact lens wearers. This is an image of a corneal abrasion stained with fluorescein dye. A Pseudomonas infection can cause corneal inflammation and corneal ulceration which would look similar on examination. Okay, now you can see that we've added a thief who appears to have been shot in the abdomen and is now laying on a stretcher. Look at that nasty red and black wound. He better go to the hospital soon. I guess it's a good thing that there's an ambulance right outside of the museum. Maybe he'll get help after all. Anyway, the red and black wound is here to help you remember ecthyma gangrenosum, which is a cutaneous infection characterized by a red round pustule that evolves into a black necrotic ulcer. The stretchers are symbol for a compromised immune system. So, putting these two ideas together should help you remember that Pseudomonas causes ecthyma gangrenosum, especially in immunocompromised patients. Alright, now let's turn our attention back over to the guy trying to steal the Mona Lisa. Let's zoom up on him so you can see the details better. As you can see, he's wearing a special headset to communicate with his fellow thieves. The headset is covering his ears and is here to help you remember that Pseudomonas causes otitis externa, which is also known as swimmer's ear, because it commonly affects swimmers. This is an image of otitis externa, and as you can see, it affects the external portion of the ear, so it's easily noticeable on physical examination. Next, notice that we've shown him with very prominent dyed beads in his hair. Dyed beads sounds like diabetes, so this is here to help you remember that diabetics are more commonly affected by pseudomonas than healthy individuals. Alright, if we zoom back out, you can see that we've added a fountain inside of the museum. This is kind of like a tub in that it holds water, but it's a bit more decorative and fits the scene better, so we decided to go with a decorative water fountain to help you remember that pseudomonas causes hot tub folliculitis. 
As the name implies, this occurs because the organism is commonly found in aquatic environments, such as hot tubs and water slides. This is an image of hot tub folliculitis. As you can see, this is characterized by inflammation of the hair follicles. Next, notice that we've shown another oblivious guy sitting next to the guard enjoying the grapes. This guy, however, is sipping on some coffee, and this is here to help you remember that Pseudomonas causes sepsis. So, sipping for sepsis. Now you can see that we've added a nurse running from the ambulance to the museum. There's obviously a lot of chaos going on upstairs, so even though she's here to help, she may actually do more harm than good. Or worse, she may get herself killed while trying to help the wounded. Anyway, the ambulance and the nurse that's potentially going to make things worse are here to help you think of hospital infections and should make you remember that Pseudomonas is commonly associated with nosocomial infections due to infected equipment. In her haste, the nurse left the doors open and didn't realize that a nearby drug addict would take advantage of the situation. As you can see, he's quickly snagging some drugs out of the back of the ambulance. This guy's here to help you remember that Pseudomonas is associated with drug addicts. Now you can see that we've added another security guard at the front entrance. This guy is here to help keep the entrance safe, and the nurse will certainly have to provide some ID to get past him. Anyway, if you look closely at his vest, you can see that it's very scaly appearing, and should help you remember that Pseudomonas causes osteomyelitis. So, scaly appearing vest for osteomyelitis. Finally, notice that we've shown a car off to the side as part of the thieves getaway plan. Just like in our other videos, the car is here to help you remember that Pseudomonas causes endocarditis. Okay, now that we've discussed the clinical features, let's wrap up this image by discussing treatment. Before we get into too much detail, you should know that there are a lot of drugs that can be used to treat Pseudomonas. However, it's kind of useless to memorize all of them because a lot of the decision making will depend on the specific infection and unique clinical situation. Therefore, rather than discuss every medication, we'll include several of the most common ones and the highest yield ones for step one. As you can see, now we've added a guy in the car with a flower staff. He's a bit flirtatious and was trying to seduce the woman who just came out of the bathroom with the flowers, but she's obviously not very interested. Anyway, the flower staff guy is here to help you remember that Pseudomonas can be treated with fluoroquinolones. Next, notice that we've added a pine tree car freshener hanging on the rear view mirror. Pine tree sounds like cefepime, so we've included it here to help you remember that cefepime can also be used. Next, notice that we've included a leaky pipe inside of the museum. Good thing there's a fountain directly underneath it. Anyway, pipe sounds like piperacillin and is here to help you remember that piperacillin can also be used. Now notice that we've shown several minnows in the fountain. Just like in our other videos, the minnows are here to help you remember that aminoglycosides can also be used. Finally, notice that we've added a painting of a tiger on the wall. Tiger sounds like tigercillin and is here to help you remember that pseudomonas can be treated with tigercillin. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's finish with a question. A 24-year-old female is admitted to the hospital following a house fire in which she sustained third-degree burns over her trunk and arm. Arms. Several days after aggressive fluid administration, pain management, and surgical debridement, she develops a diffuse skin infection. She is successfully treated with cefepime and tobramycin and discharged from the hospital. The organism most likely responsible for this patient's skin infection is A. Oxidase negative, B. Urease positive, C. Modal, or D. A slow lactose fermenter. Okay, there are three key points from the question stem that should have helped you get this answer correct. First, the patient is a burn victim so she sustained third-degree burns. Second, she developed a diffuse skin infection following the accident. And finally, she was successfully treated with cefepime and tobramycin. Each of these clues are suggestive of pseudomonas, so with this in mind, the correct answer is C. The organism is modal. From the image, recall that the flag right here is included in the image to help you remember that Pseudomonas is a flagellated modal organism. Additionally, the guy getting burned right here should have helped you remember that Pseudomonas is associated with burn victims. Finally, the pine tree right here and the minnows in the fountain over here should have helped you remember that Pseudomonas can be treated with cefepime and aminoglycosides, such as tobramycin. A, B, and D are not characteristics of Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas is oxidase positive, urease negative, and does not ferment lactose. So again, the correct answer is C, modal. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about Pseudomonas aeruginosa.